Hello, this is Ian from White Horse RV, and we'll be demoing the 2017 Jayco Hummingbird 17RB. We'll start up front here. On this model, you have a power tongue jack, which will raise you up for down, docking light. The cap here is so you can access the uh, shaft. If for some reason you don't have power or you can't get the jack to function with the switch, you can take this off, put your crank handle in it, and manually operate it. Um, you have the battery here. That is an RV or marine style battery, a 24 series. Propane tank here. This has four scissor jacks all the way around. They're operated by a crank handle that is in a compartment. This is the outside of your water heater. You have your drain plug here. It's a nylon drain plug. Uh, when you remove it, you only want to put it or another nylon plug in. You don't want to use steel or brass because it's an aluminum tank and it can be cross-threaded easily. Um, you want to drain that if it's sitting for any long period of time or when you're winterizing. Next to it here, you have your city water in. That's where you would connect your pressurized hose in from your campground or your house, and that would supply water through the plumbing system. Over here, you have your fresh tank fill. Uh, this tank here... You put water in it if you do not have access to a pressurized hose or when you're in transit. So you could use your water pump to supply yourself with your own water. And below down here is the low point drain for it. And that there is the uh, exhaust for your furnace. This model does have a Schwintex style slide out. You only want to lube this with silicone. Um, the system has two motors and is voltage sensitive. So if your camper's below 10, 5, 10 volts. It may go in or out crooked. So if you're going out crooked, you want to stop, bring the, plug it in, hook it to your vehicle, bring the battery up, and then if, if it happened while you were going out, you want to come in now. You want to go in the opposite direction of where you had the problem. Then you want to hold the switch for 30 seconds after you hear it stop. If there is an issue, it, it takes up to 30 seconds for it to notice and restart itself to realign itself. Uh, here you do have a black tank flush. Uh, that's for it's basically a sprinkler head in your black tank uh, for your toilet. You want to make sure you have the black valve open down here, open first. You want that this valve here open before you add any water to the black tank flush. That way it can run right out and you don't have to worry about a venting problem with venting the air out while you're putting the water in. You also want to make sure you turn the water off before you shut that valve. Now this valve is for the black tank, which is the toilet. So you want to leave that shut during normal use because you're going to put a chemical in it and to help break down materials and help with odor. So you want to have it shut so it doesn't run out. Usually wait till it's about two thirds, you pull and dump it, then you shut it when it's, em when it's empty. And probably just before you leave the campground, you'd want to use your black tank flush to clear out your hose in the tank. This one here is your gray valve. That one there is for your showers and your sink. Now, that one can be left open on the campground when you have your sewer hose connected, which twists here. You don't need to leave that shut. You can leave that open during camping. Over here is the outside of your refrigerator. Uh, the only time you really have to go in these access panels is usually beginning of season just to clean it out in case uh, an insect or something had made a mess in there. Over here you have your cable TV input. Right here behind this lid is the coax cable input. Right there. This has a 30 amp twist lock plug. You unscrew this, twist it, remove your whole cord and put it in the compartment. It is a 30 amp 110 cord. This is your outside shower. In here you have hot and cold and a shower head. Coming around to the back, it does have a grill mount there, grill rack. If you get an RV grill, if the certain models come with them, some do not. Some come with just the rack and the propane line right there where you can connect your quick connect hose for a grill. Uh, most all RV grills are compatible with all RVs usually. So if your model's set up for it but doesn't have one, you can usually buy them right at your local RV place. Uh, you have an apartment here. Let me open up our door and get our keys. On this model, it's called what they call key to like, meaning every compartment and the entrance door uses the same key. The only different key on this is for the shower. And that's your little black key. That's just for the outside shower. The rest of the keys... You get one key that fits all your compartments and fits your entrance door. And your black key is for this compartment here. Or 
more. Okay, hold on one second. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, you want to put WD-40 in them locks. This was just washed, and I'll just I'll have to lube that lock again. Uh, every time you wash your RV, you just want to spray a little WD-40 in each lock to help prevent that. But here's your outside shower, your head, which there's a hanger to put it here, and you're hot and cold. This does have a full-size spare. Now, you have a mount over here that you can mount a TV on the outside, underneath your awning. You have a cable output and a 110 outlet there. Okay, and this model does come with a grill, which it is located right there. And there are your crank handles. The smaller one is for your front power jack. The longer one is for your, your stabilizing jacks. Most, and these lights have a center button to turn them on and off. I will now show you the power awning. Well, first, right here is your fuse panel and your converter. It's all in one. There is a fan in here that you will hear run occasionally. You have all your 12 volt fuses and all your 110 breakers. They are all labeled for what they do. Coming over here, you have your carbon monoxide and LP detector, which is hardwired to the battery up front. You have your fire extinguisher there. And like I said, so they may have a light switch for lights, and even if they do, they'll still have a button in the center to turn them on and off. Now over here, when you first walk in, you have your slide out control. stop hold it for a couple seconds and let go now your awning switch is here which when I depress that it's gonna run our awning out now this awning does use gas struts to help push it out um, which makes it able to move if it's windy so if it's you have excessive wind you're gonna want to bring it in because it'll start moving too much and it could possibly damage itself now we'll bring that back in you just hold the button until it comes all the way in and stops moving okay then over here we have your water pump switch your propane water heater switch if it does not light a little red light will come on there um, it tries to light three times after the third time if it does not light it goes to a safe mode which you'd have to turn it off turn it on again generally it happens if uh, you've had your propane off for a while and there's air in the lines this switch here is the 110 side for your water heater if you want to run it on just 110 no propane you can do that you have the monitor here, check your fresh your battery your black and your gray tank and like i said a black tank you wait till it gets two-thirds before you open it now there is a door stashed away in this little pocket here not a door i'm sorry a table a fold-out table coming in the bathroom you have your GFI outlet down here. This outlet runs all the 110 outlets throughout the whole RV. So if you don't have power somewhere, I would check that before I check your fuse panel. This has a stand-up shower. On this model also, you want to make sure everything's clear of this aisle before you bring your slide out in. Um, it has enough power that it will damage things if things are in the way or damage itself. This here is for your furnace. You push the top one over. They are stiff. It may feel like you don't want to go, but just give it a little push and it will go. That turns it on and your lower handle does your temperature setting. And you just push it back over to turn it off. Your sink, you need it. Here's your stove. You would just put this to light and use a grill lighter to light the burner. Your AC is here with your AC controls in the center of it. You can have just fan or you can have AC. There's different settings on that. The first knob there that will tell you. The second knob is for temperature. You have your vent air output there. You have your intake here. Your intake has a filter in it, which you can take down and clean, but this is a thinner filter. You could also just vacuum it about once a week and you'd be fine. And these little knobs here help control the baffles so you can have more air pushing down the front or back. Over here is your radio. This is also your DVD player. 
it's it's a AM FM DVD Bluetooth. You has inputs for thumb drives, auxiliary outputs for headphones. You just hit power to turn it on. A and B is the speaker zone. A is inside. B is outside. And now coming down here. Over here is where you would mount your television. You would just uh, mount a mount on the wall. You make sure you use an RV mount, you, um, and you make sure that your screws, some of the kits come with screws that are a little too long, so make sure your screws are not too long to go through the wall. You have your RCA cables from the DVD player, and an HDMI from the DVD player. You can connect that so your TV would have those, or you, your TV would have the DVD players. Um, coming around here now for winterizing this model you have to lift your mattress up and lift this pan up and you can access your water heater and your water pump you have this is a two valve system for the bypass on the water heater when they're in line with the two hoses it's putting water in the water tank to be heated now if they're in line with the up and down basically if they're horizontal you're in use mode if they're vertical they're bypassing the water heater so you can winterize it and not fill the water heater with antifreeze down here you have your water pump and you have that clear winterizing hose there's another valve there uh, when it's in line with the white lines it's sucking from your fresh tank if you turn that knob so it's in line with the clear hose you can then place your hose in a gallon of antifreeze turn your pump on and you'd be able to winterize your trail. You just run it until pink comes out of every faucet, toilet, outside shower, etc. Down here, you have your coax cable connection from your antenna. Over here's your booster switch. When pushed in with the green light on, it's boosting the antenna signal and blocking the cable in. This controls the outlet on the outside also for your coax cable. When it's off, green light out, it's now letting the campground cable come in. This also has a USB charging port by the bed. Your smoke detector is located up here. That uses a nine volt battery, which is inside of it. And over here is just a vent that you could open to uh, cool off air in here. Now, it's just a 110 household microwave. You need to be plugged in for that to operate. Now this is an RV refrigerator. You do have two options on this one. Right now it's on propane. If you turn your option knob to the plug, it's on 110. Now, if you're on propane, we'll say, you have to get your propane knob here, put it to the high setting. You want to hold it in and push this. If it was turned off, this would be in the white. As soon as I ignite it, it starts going over to the green. Once it gets further over, you know you're lit. If this never reaches all the way over there, Keep pulling this in and keep striking the sparker until you see that dial move. It may take a little while. You might want to light your stove first to bleed out the air because it's a small orifice. Now, and make sure that your 110 knob's off. Now, if we're going to use 110, we're going to spin that knob to 110. We're going to turn our propane knob off to that symbol. Then we're going to come over here. We're going to get this one, which is the 110, as it shows with the plug. And we're going to put it, spin it around the coldest you have to turn both knobs on for it to work if you turn one knob off it shuts it off but this has to be on the right option and the corresponding knob for 110 or propane has to be on also or it will not work and as you see since i turned it off our little orange indicator is slowly going back to white as it cools down from the burner now with your lock here you lift that up the top part here would be the freezer section as you see the ice tray, the lower is your refrigerator. Now you can half lock this with this lock right here. That's what you do when you're storing it. You don't want this shut. When everything's turned off, it will get moldy. You want to leave it vetted. But when you're using it, you just push it to lift up, push the rest of the way in, and now it's locked. This here is your, the control for your antenna. It's a fixed height. It does not ro roll up or down. This is just to rotate it to try and tune in signal. And that is all for this model. I thank you for watching and have a nice day.